Hello, welcome to the one year with the Ramhal, and the weekly portion is the Zia. So here uh, I'm going to share you a few ideas. Okay, on the so we continue this topic brought on the Shmini on the eighth day, okay, which fall into the realm of impurity. Previously discussed about the kashrut, which animals are kosher and what are the signs, how we can recognize them based on their uh, uh, characteristics. So we have other topics that regarding the impure aspects. Daber Abne Israel Lomar Ishaki Tazria Viada Zahar Vitama Shivat Yamin Kiame Nida Dokta Titma. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman be delivered and bear a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, as in the days of the impurity of her sickness shall be unclean. So, Isha ki tazria v'yada zahar, if a woman be delivered and bear a man child. So, why it is important to mention that the woman is also conceived, uh, obviously, and then gave birth to a boy. Why wasn't it enough mentioned that he gave birth to a boy? A boy, obviously, she was conceived previously. So, the root of tazria is conceived, is related to the word zera, seed. So, which is the uh, how the, the soul is descending from the Olam and Shamot and find its parents, basically, the adult, okay, uh, through whom it can best fulfill its correction through the children. So, both parties, the unborn child and the adult, will benefit from this relationship that they're going to have. Um, and the unborn child, uh, the, the shamad, the soul of the child, is chooses the parent. So Tazria, the value of it, we have Ta 400, Zayin 7, Reish 200, Yud 10, Ayin 70. So altogether, 687. Okay. Similarly, uh, that we have, uh, that uh, if you will be spelling out the name of the creator of K, Vav, Yud, K, uh, and the uh, RFK Yud K. Okay, so if we, we're writing out K uh, and also the letter Vav and the Yud and the He itself, that is 232, and Aleph He Yud He, it is 455. Together, also, they're creating the sum of 687. We're going to see the explanation. So uh, a woman can only give birth to a boy if these numbers are matching numbers. So it is says, Isha ki tazria vel A woman conceives, give birth to a male child, that the meaning tazria in the case in, implies bringing forth a male child. So during a pregnancy, there is uh, no menstrual bleeding since all the blood is nourishing the embryo. During the childbirth, the blood is accumulated in the mother's body over the nine months of pregnancy. It is expelled uh, the, when she's giving birth. So all this impure substance is also leaving the, the mother's body. So end of the process, she immerses in the mikveh and becomes completely purified. So let's see and examine the significance of magical numbers that we have here, 7 and 8. So the ceremony of the Brit Mila circumcision, it takes place on the eighth day. Why impurity is still present on the mother's body for uh, for before and even after that. Through the Brit Mila, the child is in initiating to the covenant of uh, Abraham. The spiritual purpose of the Brit Mila is to strengthen the bond between the creator and uh, the child uh, uh, so that he will going to belong to Bnei Israel. And from that moment, after the Brit Milah, he can basically choose between good and evil. So it is better to do it uh, in a very early age. During the seven days before the Brit Milah, the infant is strengthened by a spiritual light, is supported by the Creator. So during the pregnancy, the embryo is even more connected to the higher world. When just born, it is... Uh, 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 this whole this process is closed, 
uh, and what he knows um, and the angel is coming basically and after the birth uh, that he, he was born and giving uh, giving a bliss to the uh, child that was just recently born and then he forgot all his mission in life on his tikkun that he needs to do. So he knows pretty much everything about life when during the state of embryo in her uh, mother's uh, body and after he's going to seek his own truth. Uh, and on the eighth day, the flesh of the foreskin shall be circumcised. So on the eighth day, on the Brit Milah, the, in, uh, the infant enters the life beginning its uh, his early, earthly correction. So prior to birth, the, as I mentioned, the embryo knows the purpose of it, his life and all about the world that he needs to know. Um, and then uh, after the bo uh, after he is born, he's starting with the bliss, he's starting to look for his correction. So the first seven days uh, before the Brit Milah are very special because it is very difficult for the soul to detach from the higher world. The soul now is in fully functioning as an earthly body and it's continuing its journey. And she shall continue in the blood of purification three and the 30 days she shall touch no hello thing nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification to be fulfilled. Why it is in the eighth day specific why that was chosen for the Brit Milah, why the eighth and not the other days. For the first seven days that after birth, the newborn receives special spiritual support corresponding to the lower seven sephirot. On the eighth day, this process is changing and the newborn receives an even more exceptional energy that keeps impurity away on that uh, exact day. So this is the day, the day of the Brit Milah will be the first in the life that may, the, uh, the male child experiences that he is uh, not connected to impurity in any level. Um, so that's meaning that uh, we'll be surrounded by a very strong, pure and positive energy. So the Brit Milah ceremony must be performed uh, uh, during the daytime. It is also associated with the chesed and the kindness, while at the night impurity may have an effect. On that day, no negative influence can reach the male child. During the Brit Milah, the child is initiated into the covenant of Abraham and his name is announced to the community. Until then, he has no personal name, only known as the, the parents knowing this name, and uh, he will have only a family name. And uh, on that day, going to announce his uh, surname. Ve'itaber Hashem and Moshe ve'lacharon lomar. And God spoke into Moses, into Aaron, saying, Adam ki ye be'or basaro she'et o safhat o beherat ve'aya be'or basaro lenega tzara'at ve'huva el Aaron ha'kohen o el echad bibanav ha'kohanim. Uh, we are going to, uh, to another topic of the Tzara'at, uh, uh, of the leprosy. It is uh, also uh, considered as impurity. Then a man shall have in the skin of the flesh rising or scrub or a bright spot, and it became the skin of the flesh, the plague of leprosy. Then he sh uh, shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or into one of these sons uh, the priest. So we have come to an, uh, this another uh, topic. Mm. So and now we are going to get into this. What is really uh, is called tzara'at and uh, and not uh, uh, the leprosy in, in this uh, religious environment. The disease is intervened with our spiritual state, the kohanim whose energy uh, is connected to the chesed, kindness, are responsible for determining the spiritual condition. 
on those who come to them and for supporting their healing process. Uh, they accompany also the sinner. So the reason of having this sara'at is caused out of something uh, detached of the right path. So they made something. Uh, um, and they need to do a recovery, restoring their energetic state. It will be the Kohen who, based on the signs, determines from which part of the disease originated in the patient. So either is going to be uh, caused by impurity forces or not. So the effects of the sins affect not only the body, but also the soul. And this is must be healed with the help of the Kohanim, who are spiritual healers. If the disease related to part that shows sign of impurity, then the patients must also accept the, these phases of healing that is determined for them. So, and every member of the community will know that they have this spiritually transgressed and will bear a significant a burden. They must be isolated and forced into the self quarantine until the, uh, they repent from their actions. So, it is important for physical health and spiritual purification and the health of the community itself. The consequences of the sins affect no, not only in the individual, but also have an impact of the community. So this isolation is provides an opportunity to set an example for proper behavior and to show what behavior is to be avoided. The reflection and setting an example take place, uh, what is the right behavior from which is individual uh, and the collective community we learn. So the Gohanim, the part play this crucial role in keeping the individual clean and willing to be spiritually to be uh, cleansed. This is a responsibility of the individual which affects the health of the community as well. So text of the, this test, a task of the Kohanim is to preserve this good health on both spiritual and physical levels as well that uh, people must be healed. Beria ha kohen et anega beora basar veshar benega hafach levan umere hanega omek meor basaro nega saraathu bera ha kohen etima oto. And uh, the priest shall look upon the plague in the skin of the flesh and if the hair in the plague be turned white and the appearance of the plague be deeper and the skin of the flesh it is the plague of leprosy, and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. So the first sign of the disease is the, that a basar v'shar v'shar benega hafach lelevan, and if the hair is plague, it be turned white. So generally, white is associated with the positivity and chesed, yet in this case of the tzara'at, this infection, a color is, denotes impurity which may seem a quite contradictory in this situation. The Kohanim play a prominent role in the process of healing and purification. They, from their level of chesed, assist uh, the Jewish people without judgment. So their inner connection with the divine enables them to recognize and spiritually heal the patient. Uh, we receive some guidelines for this uh, from the Torah. It's coming, the, the text uh, from the Torah we'll see, along with many other signs that told them through the oral tradition and to recognize the disease. The result of this spiritual healing will also lead to physical healing as well. So unfortunately, at this present moment, there is no opportunity to be healed through the abilities of the Kohanim. However, we look forward to the rebuilding of the third temple where once again the Kohanim will be healed. Uh, then they will be able to assist the Jewish people by being healing and the process of the healing. Once the patient is purified, they can return to the camp of the Jewish people. So this other section is related to the impurity found in the parasha, focusing all of the laws of the shatness. Shatness is uh, uh, the law that prohibits the combination of wool and linen. The original Hebrew meaning of the word shatness, it's meaning mixture. So it is a Torah that commands that wool and linen, two different kinds of fabrics, shouldn't be used together. Uh, so these materials have to be separated. Due to the compli uh, compliance with the shatness rules, 
The community regularly inspects their garments, even today, to ensure that pro uh, prohibited materials are not mixed in the fabric. These are the rules applying to combined use of the wool and the linen, which not shall be mixed. So, so each of the materials, what why, what is the reason? What could be my dear reason for the shutness? So the wool symbolizing the chesed, uh, it's giving, while the linen is symbolizing the gura, the judgment. So these two different energies cannot be mixed because they are opposing effects uh, uh, and creating um, um, the spiritual short circuit. Therefore, it is important not to mix these materials and maintain balance in this significant uh, uh, balance in our lifetime. Okay, so this was for today and see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.